This video is meant to give you a better understanding of fetal circulation. Remember that when discussing fetal circulation, that a fetus is in utero. Because a fetus is in utero, the fetus will get its nutrients and oxygen from mum's system, and mum's system will also get rid of waste products for the fetus. This exchange is done across the placenta, so it makes sense then that the fetal lungs are not required for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, and that the liver is not required to detoxify the blood. As the human body is very efficient, energy is conserved by avoiding systems that are not yet functioning in the fetus. We are going to discuss four structures that are unique to fetal circulation that accomplish this task. First, the human heart has four chambers. In a postnatal individual, the two chambers on the right side of the heart collect deoxygenated blood from the body and deliver it to the lungs to get oxygen. The two chambers on the left side of the heart pump freshly oxygenated blood to the body. In fetal circulation, the lungs are not working, so freshly oxygenated blood is delivered to the right side of the fetal heart from the placenta by the umbilical vein. As the blood in the right side of the fetal heart is already oxygenated, it does not need to be pumped to the non-functioning fetal lungs. There are two structures in fetal circulation that allow blood to bypass the lungs. The first structure is an opening between the walls of the right and left atrium called the oval opening. The oval opening allows blood to flow directly from the right atrium to the left atrium to be pumped from the left side of the heart to the body. If the flap to this opening does not seal after birth, oxygenated blood will mix with deoxygenated blood and result in a blue baby. As some blood will be pumped from the right atrium to the right ventricle, it will end up in the pulmonary trunk on its way to the lungs. To avoid the lungs, a second structure called the arterial duct is located between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. If you can remember that this opening is located between two arteries, it makes it easier to remember that the duct is called the arterial duct. The arterial duct allows blood to flow from the pulmonary artery directly into the aorta, thereby bypassing the lungs. The third structure that is unique to fetal circulation is the umbilical artery and vein. Remember that the definition of an artery is to carry blood away from the heart, so it makes sense then that the umbilical artery carries blood away from the fetus to the placenta for nutrient, waste, and gas exchange. It also makes sense that the umbilical artery will have high levels of carbon dioxide and other waste products and low levels of oxygen and nutrients. The function of veins is to carry blood back to the heart, so it makes sense then to say that the umbilical vein carries freshly oxygenated blood high in nutrients and low in carbon dioxide and waste from the placenta to the fetus. This brings us to the fourth unique structure in fetal circulation, the venosus duct. The venosus duct is located between the umbilical vein and the vena cava and allows the freshly oxygenated clean blood that has been picked up from the placenta to bypass the liver and go directly to the fetal heart via the vena cava. If you can remember that this structure is located between two veins, that is the umbilical vein and the vena cava, it makes it easier to remember that this duct is called the venosus duct. Be sure that you can identify these four structures given a fetal diagram and be able to describe their functions.